Lake Coeur d'Alene, where water that came to the mountains and fields as raindrops and snowflakes gathers before moving through the Spokane and Columbia rivers on its journey to the sea. This is your water to drink, to nurture crops, to bathe in, to play in. It is the source of all life here. For many, it is the reason to be here. Within this flow, invisible to the eye and perilous to life, are the poisons from over a century of mining and smelting. Lead, zinc, and cadmium are here in abundance. The history and the science are clear. These metals, at the levels found in this watershed, are killers. Why is this pollution here? Where did it come from? What can we do about it? Perhaps we can answer some of these questions by looking at the entire Coeur d'Alene Spokane watershed. The Coeur d'Alene Spokane watershed covers an area of over 1,500 square miles. Lake Coeur d'Alene is, in reality, a drowned river valley, complete with flowing water and a strong current, emptying into the Spokane River and continuing on to the Columbia River. The drainage system includes mountains, small streams, and vast forests collecting moisture that eventually tumbles here or is stored by nature below ground in the aquifer. Each piece of this watershed is connected to the other, functioning as a system. If left to nature's design, each piece serves to ease the extremes of nature's balancing act. The nature of this watershed, however, has been drastically altered by development. The pollution begins here, in the dozens of creeks and abandoned sites in North Idaho's mining district. The riches produced by 100 years of hard rock mining have diminished to a trickle, but mining's toxic legacy remains. The plume of heavy metal poison stretches from the Idaho-Montana line to the Columbia River right through Spokane. The relentless flow of heavy metals here represents the worst pollution of its kind in the world. Development brought on this imminent danger. Dozens of mines and thousands of miners filled this valley and region beginning in the early 1880s. Mining poured wealth into the inland northwest at a staggering rate, generating growth in North Idaho and providing a foundation for modern life and economic prosperity in Spokane. Most of that wealth is long gone now. What remains is the mine's waste, 72 million tons of it. Now it's in your rivers, your lakes, your wetlands. Much of it continues to move downstream. During a single day of flooding in February of 1996, the U.S. Geological Survey reported that the Coeur d'Alene River carried over one million pounds of lead into Lake Coeur d'Alene. According to the Idaho Division of Environmental Quality, the 1996 flood brought an influx of lead so great that the water in Lake Coeur d'Alene exceeded federal safe drinking water standards for the first time in history. We are not alone here. We share the natural resources in this watershed with a vast population of creatures. They suffer far too often and pay too dear a price for our development. Migrating tundra swans seek out the lower Coeur d'Alene River just as they have for untold centuries. Just as certain as the spring thaw, they come. Just as certain, many will die, victims of lead contamination, deep and thick in the sediments of these lakes and wetlands. Tundra swans, trumpeter swans, Canada geese, and at least six other species of waterfowl are poisoned and die here. Waterfowl deaths have been documented here for over 60 years. The Idaho Wildlife Federation estimates that over 7,000 tundra swans have been killed by lead poisoning in the past quarter century. Predators including eagles, hawks, kestrels, osprey, and mink are also affected. The metals are found at some level in every type of plant, bird, fish, 
and mammal living in or near these waters. Federal agencies continue to warn us of lead contamination and the danger of eating large quantities of fish from these waters. They warn us that many areas are unsafe for children to play in. The toxic legacy continues to spread as more and more of these poisons work their way downstream. Lead poisons almost everything. It is especially dangerous to children, diminishing their emotional growth and intellectual development. Cadmium causes cancer of the kidney, liver, and other internal organs. Zinc primarily destroys plant life, but at the extreme levels found here, it is toxic to animals and humans. The worst cases of lead poisoning ever found in children were documented just upstream in Kellogg, Idaho. Here, a 21 square mile Superfund site exists in the midst of this polluted watershed. The flooding problem is compounded by continued clear cutting and road building in the Panhandle's forests. These activities tear the fabric of our watershed, creating faster runoff and decreasing the river's natural ability to contain the flood water. On its journey toward the ocean, the pollution moves from the upper Coeur d'Alene River drainage into Lake Coeur d'Alene. Here, the heavy metal repository includes over 165 billion pounds of contaminated sediment. It covers the lake bottom 15 inches deep and 30 miles long. The deposited metals could be kept caged on the bottom of the lake, but excessive nutrients coming into the lake can lead to oxygen depletion. This in turn creates a condition that liquefies the metals, freeing them into the water column. Unfortunately, the water in Lake Coeur d'Alene already exceeds the state standard set for the protection of aquatic life. From here, the pollution enters the Spokane River. Gravity is the pilot now. Metals from excessive concentrations upstream are carried downstream, suspended in the water of the Spokane River. Sediments in the Spokane River above Upriver Dam are already severely toxic. The Washington State Department of Ecology confirms that metals in our river exceed the limits allowed to meet state water quality standards. Toxic or severe levels of lead are documented as far downstream as Long Lake at the confluence of the Spokane and the Little Spokane Rivers. Our future is at risk. The science is almost complete. The goal is to create a basin-wide cleanup. The price tag for metals cleanup could exceed $600 million. Who will pay remains the biggest question. Conservation groups, tribal agencies, and others maintain that restoration should be funded jointly by the mining companies and the taxpayers through a federal appropriation. Protecting the Coeur d'Alene Spokane watershed also involves restoring the forests and reducing nutrient pollution from agriculture, development, and logging. A thorough restoration plan means supporting the cleanup project, stabilizing any remaining pollution, and finally, controlling nutrient pollution to protect the future water quality of Lake Coeur d'Alene and the Spokane River. These natural resources and this natural beauty are the foundation for our quality of life here. A way of life that is threatened by the presence of heavy metals in our rivers, our lakes, and our land. The time for you to help is now. Your elected representatives at all levels, from county commissioners to the President of the United States, must understand that restoring the Coeur d'Alene Spokane watershed will take not only the commitment of money, but also of political will. We must craft solutions that will stand for generations. Our commitment must be strong. It is for the sake of our children, our grandchildren, and the children of our grandchildren that we act now so that they do not suffer the fate of living in a poisoned land. I'm Tim Cunningham.